Hey, how's it going, guys? Welcome back to another video with your host, Rising Oblivion. There hasn't been a whole lot to talk about recently. That's why I've not been here doing any videos for a little while. But we finally have some more stuff here for Project Refantasio. I'm going to keep calling it Project Refantasio or Metaphor, whatever, but it's just Metaphor Refantasio. So we have some more details for this game. If you didn't know, at the Game Awards, they actually showcased one of the first, like, I'd say, like, full length trailers, really. And then Atlas over there uploaded their own behind the scenes sort of look at the game with some actual people from the dev team talking about the game and what they expect and what they want to do moving forward with Metaphor Refantasio. If you didn't know, this is a brand new IP from Atlas. So, guys, this is final. Before we jump into this, I just want to say I am happy that finally we get to like talk about new characters and a new scenery and. This is a new game from Atlas. Finally, you know, there's not it's not just another remake or a, a continuation of a series. Don't get me wrong, I like Persona 5 Tactica, but I would love to move on to new characters and new places and stuff. And I think Persona 3 Reload is going to be amazing as well. Don't get me wrong, I'm hyped for all that stuff, but man, it is nice just finally being able to explore something new, talk about new characters, talk about a new place that we have going on here, but I know I'm going to be rambling a little bit, maybe not everybody feels the exact same way about this, let me know if you guys feel the same way. I'm just happy that we're finally getting to talk about something brand new, especially from Atlas, and it's another JRPG. Like I said, this is another IP for them. This could be potentially a long-going series, similar to what happened to Persona, or, you know, some of the other things like Digital Devil Saga. Hopefully they don't bring that back and screw that up or something. But Look, we have some cool stuff here. We had a little video from Atlas called The Creator's Voice that goes over some new stuff. I'm going to have that on in the background. That includes new footage and details about the game, the battle system, the magic, the music, stuff like that. That's going to be going on in the background. And we actually have some interviews going on within this trailer from the actual director of the game, the character designer, and the composer of the game as well. They're speaking all in Japanese, it's translated a little bit weird, but I think today I'm just going to go over what they talked about here in these interviews and what kind of was going on in terms of their thoughts when it came to this game. So I'm going to have that on in the background, and also I guess I'm going to be kind of translating, but just giving you the meat potatoes here of what's kind of going on for this game and what they're saying about the game. Again, this is directly from the people creating the game, so we're getting some intense details here. So let's go ahead and jump into the world of the game. This is going to be our first little section here, so let's go and talk about the world. So, Katsura Hashino, I believe that's how you're supposed to say his name, it says, Even though it's a world where magic exists, people can't use it without help. So they're not just natural spellcasters, they need some type of aid when it comes to this world. In this world, you have to purchase a special piece of equipment to be capable of magic. Magic is a kind of power that is supposed to spring from a person's imagination, but that art has been lost over time. So, it is more like a type of art form. It's a type of thing you're supposed to use and, you know, I guess constantly be practicing on, like meditation maybe, something like that. It's a art style. It's a it's something you're supposed to keep learning. He then goes on to say that magic has more restrictions in the world. It says, in other words, people are reliant on the world's magical tools. That said, the main characters of the story are able to transform their own bodies into weapons, which are called archetypes. So we were speculating a little bit on what the archetype system was. We knew about this from earlier bits of news we had about this game, but the archetypes are basically the awakening that the character has and what their weapons are going to be. He goes on to say that people are born with various heroic aspects, but these embodiments are typically never awakened. I think they're talking about other people in the world, but he says when they are awakened, it is not though it is predetermined. So not everybody just has an awakening and it, it goes forward, right? It takes time and not necessarily that it's always going to happen. He says an awakening happens by interacting with others and being inspired by their actions. For example, you might think to yourself that someone acts very much like a knight or another person might seem like a true warrior. By making this connection, the archetype of the warrior, which has been dormant within the person since birth, is awakened and that's how the system works. So, certain people are born with a certain type of heroic aspect or certain aspects about them. I guess it doesn't have to be heroic. And then later on, through connections of other people and what they do within the world, eventually that dormant side of them is awakened, and that is when their archetype comes out. So, 
again, I don't want to compare this to other stuff, but this is an Atlas property, so I think it's fair. Very similar to Persona, there's an awakening that allows this person to have their dormanted power, their true power within themselves. It sounds like that is sort of similar to what we have going on here. There's a certain archetype within all the characters. However, not everybody has their archetype awakened, but whenever they are awakened, they become their you know true archetype of who they're supposed to be. And I think that's all we're going to do here for the archetypes. I'm going to try not to be too spoilery within this video because, man, I, I really just like, like I said, I like jumping into something new and I'm happy that we finally get to jump into something new. But let's continue on to a little bit more what they said in this interview, and that is the story. Now, I'm just going to say it a little bit here. I'm not going to try and spoil you guys, but there's just a little bit that I'm going to read from the actual transcript, The uh, you know, basically what we have here. I'm just going to talk a little bit about this. So, it says that the starting point of the story is that of any person can become a king if he or she becomes the most popular. After that, many things can happen. Those currently in uh, power fame, the elections as a competition that they can display their own power, hoping to maintain the control they currently have. I mean, that sounds familiar. <laughs> the protagonist gets involved in this election race, and as the story unfolds, he embarks on a journey to travel around the country to gather support. We're combining this aspect with elements of travel, which is pretty cool, which is a critical element in fantasy. So there's going to be a lot of travel, it seems like, when we're going around doing this election race. In our unique Atlas approach, we're trying to combine the very grounded and realistic travel experience with a more serious and mysterious main story for players to enjoy. That's what I'm going to go for with in terms of the story. I think a lot of people wondered if we we're going to be staying in that main uh, like kingdom that we've seen in a lot of the trailers. Doesn't seem like that's the case, guys. Seems like we are going to be embarking on a lot of journeys, embarking, embarking on a lot of journeys throughout the country and traveling around gathering support from other characters maybe that's where we end up having other party members joining our team potentially we go there see them have an awakening or something like that and then they end up joining our squad which makes me wonder is our character already awakened by the time we play probably not we probably stumble across them first doing their awakening i don't know let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below in terms of awakenings and people joining the party surely we're traveling to other parts of the world that's going to be where we end up having you know other people join our team i'd assume anyway moving on let's talk about the battle system and what we had here in this interview they said as for what kind of game we are making this time as creators involved in persona naturally we have included command battles which we might say is our specialty or expertise, they said. I wouldn't exactly call them a waste of time, but often battles with low-level opponents that you already know how to beat can at times feel like a hassle. I mean, Persona 5 kind of figured that out with uh, Ryuji's um, you know, confidant stuff. You just like run into him or whatever. I guess that only works, um, you know, palaces or whatnot, low-level stuff, but we already kind of have that for certain things, but they're talking about it here in... Um, Metaphory Fantasio as well, so those parts should be quick and fun. There are other parts that we are more deserving of the player's time. Um, it could include part of the story that leaves you wondering what happens next, or the party's customization aspects or planning your journey as you strengthen your party. We would like players to spend their time on a more interesting aspect like these. So it seems like they're trying to bring your attention towards things that matter a bit more when it comes to the combat, not these low-level stuff that is super repetitive, which I like. Seriously, that's a really good thing. Jerry RPGs do tend to do this quite a bit where you're fighting these super low level battles over and over and over again. It's kind of like Pokemon, right? You're running the grass, you're fighting a level 3 Pidgey when you have a level 50 Gyarados or something like that. It's just like, it just becomes kind of monotonous and kind of boring, which is, it's fair. It really is. It's fair. In order to achieve this, we have adopted a new battle system where we have a command battles as the base, but on top of that, we've incorporated a system where you're able to defeat enemies on the field directly if you determine that they are weaker than you. So you don't have to go into a full on, I guess, the full length turn based combat. It seems like you're able to just defeat them on the field directly if you rather do that, if you know that they're weak in you. It is not a separate two-part system where some enemies can only be fought in command battles or some must be defeated with action. We actually let the players judge where, uh, which enemies are stronger than they are or which enemies they have fought before. So stronger or, or not as strong as you or you've already fought them before, you can choose whether or not you want to go into a full-length battle or just a quick little battle. Seems to me that's 
kind of what they're saying here. We are very particular about letting the player make that determination and giving players the option to choose at all times. This is an all new system so I strongly encourage you to pick it up and play with this. So it seems like they're giving us this new system to also at the same time kind of see what we feel in terms of whether or not this is something we want to do. I really liked that in Persona 5 Royal where we had the ability just to run through enemies. Um, it was nice not having to completely do uh, I think I said something wrong I said like palaces it's only within the actual uh, fuck I'm forgetting the mode the place where you the subway system and Persona 5 Royce because I'm recording that I can't remember it but the um place that mazes all the way down where you have Morgana as a car when you run into them you just run into them and the battle is over you don't have to keep mementos and mementos is the only place you can do that in royal where you just run into the enemy and they just completely die and you get all the xp and everything else you need that's all you have to do that's really nice i'm glad that they're bringing that in for this game too moving on over we have sojimi here actually talking about the characters and the art style for the game the main character wears a checkered coat and some people said isn't it strange that he's traveling wearing white clothes that can get dirty <laughs> so i i don't know i guess people were saying that i decided the protagonist with the idea that i wanted to create a character with a sense of style prioritizing design both persona and metaphor don't have the name for the protagonist Silent name protagonist once again, meaning that they're the player's character, but with the context in which I designed the protagonist, this time is it a bit different, he says. With I, uh, when I draw the illustration, there's an overall impression you get when the protagonist comes to the forefront. How should I put it? I think you can sense a uh, more of a character in the eyes than before. Going beyond just a self-projection, for example, the protagonist th uh, does things like riding um, on a sword. What the fuck? Is that? I just read that right? For example, the protagonist does things like riding on a sword. Okay. And there's a vehicle called the Gauntlet Runner. So it seems like not only is this a silent protagonist, but it looks like they're trying to add a little bit more um, personality to the main character. So it's a silent protagonist. There is self-projection. That's why they do that with a silent protagonist. You're supposed to put yourself kind of in the shoes of the main character, but it looks like they're still giving some personality here um, when it comes to integrating yourself kind of kind of within the game, it seems. Moving on over, let's talk a little bit about the music um, by um, Soji Meguro, I believe that's how you say it. He says that I felt with the diversity of the music is very extensive and a broad range for this game. The theme was based on religious music, that's interesting, but it also needed to reflect the world of metaphor. The world of metaphor has many different tribes of people, so their faces are varied as they are. I took it upon myself to dig deeper and contemplate what music is rooted in the idea would this be like. I think there is a much broader interpretation of music since they were written in accordance with such a theme. So it seems like all these different places, religions, cultures, stuff like that was in mind for the music for all the different areas of this game. He says it's not often that we've done a large scale live recordings of the music at Atlas. So that's nice. They're doing big large scale maybe full orchestra type stuff, less um, computer digitizing of the music. So he says, I feel that the sound is very elaborate in that regard. We are making a different approach than with Persona. So that's cool. I'm glad that they're trying to do that. Atlas typically does a pretty good job here. I think when it comes to music, I'm not really too worried about that. They always typically do like a pretty fantastic job of having a broad range of music, different palaces, different dungeons, different characters. Shin Megami Tensei 5. A lot of people were not super big fans of that game. However, it has a banging soundtrack. A lot of them have really, really good soundtracks. Even if it's a game you don't like, it's like, wow, the soundtrack is still amazing. That's one of the first things I ever heard when it came to Persona just in general. Uh, the music is just amazing. And lastly here, before I sort of wrap up this video, they did talk a little bit about the Atlas 35th anniversary. If you didn't know, 2024, so next year, is actually Atlas's 35th anniversary. They have a brand new logo done for that, and they've also talked about this sort of new thing that they're doing, which is the Atlas branded 35th World Tour 
Road to Metaphor Refantasio event that takes place in 2024. So it seems like they're doing this Atlas 35th anniversary thing that's going to lead up to Metaphor Refantasio's release date. I would assume that's kind of what we have going on here. And then lastly, they sort of talk about, yes, Metaphor Refantasio will be releasing worldwide in fall 2024 for the Xbox Series X and S, Windows PC, PS4, PS5, and Steam. So, of course, we know that's going to be coming out for all of those platforms, and it will be coming out in fall of 2024. So it seems like maybe we're going to be having a lot of these types of celebrations and things with the Atlas 35th Anniversary World Tour thing leading up to Metaphor Refantasio's release date there in the fall. It seems like they're going to be maybe talking about other things here. If it's anything like the... <laughs> anniversary we were supposed to have like this year for Shin Megami Tensei I don't know it's it's probably not going to be too many things that we have here I'll make sure to keep you guys updated on all content and everything of course when it comes to that here on the channel but man um this is a lot this is actually a lot and it makes me happy that like I said we get to finally talk about new stuff it's it's nice we're getting to see new characters. They're jumping into other things. They deliberately said here, the music, yeah, we're doing something different than Persona. We're not wanting to do the same thing again, which is nice. I think a lot of people find something they like and they're always like, I want more, I want more of it. But real reality, and I think Steve Jobs said something like this, people don't know what they want until they have it, you know? So this could very well be something that we need a next jump when it comes to JRPGs. It does look very promising, I have to say. The art style looks good, the music looks good. It seems like everybody within this game is caring a lot about this. And from what we can tell, this has been something that they've been working on for a very long time. They have teased it for years now. So who knows how much earlier than that they've been working on this thing that whole time. It's kind of hard to tell. But I think that's going to kind of wrap up this video. I know this is a bit of a long video here. I wanted to have something nice for you guys to come back to. We kept getting little sprinkles here and there of Refantasio, but I just didn't think it was anything worthy of doing a full-length video on. But the fact that we've had so many different things here, this new trailer that's been playing in the background, interviews from everybody there, it seemed like this was the perfect time to kind of make a video to talk a little bit more about this game. It's honestly been something that I've been super excited for. I'm not 100% sure how the fan base feels about this, but I think this is something we should really, you know, be open to having. This isn't going to be another Soul Hackers type meme. I think this is going to be something really special. And if not, then hey, at least they're trying new things and, you know, maybe this will be something fun, you know. Hopefully it's not like a 7 out of 10. Hopefully this is more like a 9 out of 10. That's what I'm really hoping for. But we should keep our expectations at a certain minimum, but also be excited when we see new things like this. I'm happy to see what we have going forward. 2024 is going to be a packed year, fellas. We have this coming out, Persona 3 Reload, Final Fantasy uh, Rebirth coming out. We have a lot of things down the pipeline. I, for sure, am going to be doing more and more content here on the channel. I've been streaming Tactica. I'll be streaming Rebirth. I'll be streaming Persona 3 Reload here on the channel as well. So please like, comment, subscribe. Click the bell to be notified when I have new news come out or whenever I have a new stream. I just did a giveaway for um persona 5 tactica and i plan to do some giveaways for reload and final fantasy rebirth and stuff so if you like giveaways maybe you want to try out these games maybe you don't have the money for it maybe the holidays are making it a little bit rough for you i'll have some giveaways coming out soon and i will have a holiday giveaway here on the channel as well here within a week or so i'll probably have that out and started but um yeah, I think that's going to be it, guys. I'll see you on the next video. Thank you all so much for liking, uh, subscribing, sticking around. I appreciate you guys like crazy. And uh, I'll see you in the next video.